Hi guys, welcome to Deco Stop. So this is the weekly podcast from us here at Simply Scuba. Uh, I myself, I am Mark, and this is Greg. Uh, we're both instructors and uh, we've been in the diving industry for a little while now so we do kind of know what we're talking about about scuba diving um, so yeah so uh, Deco Stop is a weekly podcast uh, this week's episode is sponsored by liverboard.com but we'll talk about more about them later liverboards man that's, that's, like, that's the way to dive that's uh, the much more civilised way mm. where literally everything is. You basically you get dressed you jump in the water yeah. you get out and, and that's kind of it Dive, breakfast, sleep, dive, lunch, sleep, dive, dinner, <laughs> sleep, night dive, chill out, sleep. Repeat, yeah. yeah. That'll yeah. do. Mm. Um, it's rough. Um, <laughs> especially when you're doing it professionally. Um, so, yeah, so we did have an amazing reception on our very first episode last week. If you haven't watched it yet, it's on uh, sort of Spotify and uh, and SoundCloud and YouTube and you name mm. it. It's, it's all over the place. So, uh, so watch that first and then, of course, come back and watch this. Um, yeah, lots of questions that we'll get to in a moment. But of course, if you do have any questions or comments that you want answered in next week's show on Saturday, um, then head over, to, uh, head over to our YouTube channel and uh, find either this video or, uh, or any of the other videos and uh, pop your question down there and, uh, and then we'll answer it in next week's show, um, as long as it's a sensible question. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so the podcast is now live on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Podcast. So go follow us on all of those. And um, yeah, rate us on iTunes. Uh, yeah. Decent. Something like five stars. Say uh, hi. Yeah, anything else don't, eh, doesn't, doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, but yeah, five, five stars would be really nice. Uh, okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about the news. So first up, I've got XDeep are upping their game. So uh, so yeah, XDeep have released their very first mask, nice. which is quite cool. Um, XDeep are very much the golden chill child at the moment. Yeah. They're um, they're kind of turning everything on its head, where it's kind of the same, but they're just making everything more ergonomic and more just fancy. Yeah. So their new mask is really popular. Yes. Very popular. Yes. So popular we couldn't get it. No, no, we, we got a few <laughs> and they just sold out immediately. And we're like, oh. We should probably invest in some more <laughs> next week. <laughs> um, so yeah, we do have more on the way, but yeah, it's just, it's smart because they, instead of just copying what everyone else does, they basically, they listen and they look around mm. on the forums and they go, oh, this diver has a, um, is complaining because they have a big nose and they can't yeah. find a mask that fits properly. Um, so they're like, oh, well, let's just make our let's mask make with one. a really big mu nose yeah. pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go figure. Yeah, with their, their, <laughs> um, their harnesses and everything, the customised ones, with their starting to get really popular now. Yeah. Uh, we've gotten, getting a couple of those. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's smart. And to like the little details, like their shoulder um, straps are a certain... Um, because webbing harnesses in uh, sort of tech BCDs, they have different hardnesses. Mm. So, uh, so the crotch strap is obviously the the softest because you'd hope so. It's there, um, and uh, and then the the shoulder straps are a certain harness, and the waistband is like the stiffest. So it's it's all you know, mm. lots little details make a make a big big difference. Yeah. Um, we've got a fleet of killer dolphins apparently <laughs> reported in uh, in Iranian waters. Um, so this is it's an old story though. It's an old it's story. Been really it's quite sad. Sad when, because um, we were discussing it earlier, it's mm. quite sad when you dig into the backstory yeah. of it, yeah. um, and how these animals have basically been mistreated their whole life. Yeah, so they they were they were owned by the Soviet government. Um, I mean, America do it as well. America have got dolphins on. Um, uh, you know, yeah. we, we don't know how they're treated or whatever. But the Soviet Union had had their um, they had some some polar bears, some dolphins, some walruses, some seals. And a couple of other lovely things, probably yeah. a parakeet or something like that. <laughs> um, but uh, and, and what they do is they, they would train them. So they had dolphins that would be able to tell the difference between the the fin uh, the propulsion noise of an American yep. um, ship as opposed to an Iranian one. So hopefully they wouldn't get the Iranian one. Yeah. Um, and and they would do they could do suicide missions where they could plant limpet mines on, on, under the boats. Yeah. The strangest one I heard was that they had. Um, harpoons attached to their heads so yeah. that they would go find a diver and then harpoon him. And sort of stab them. So next yeah. time you see a dolphin, be a bit careful. Just just look at his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something pointy on his head, swim away. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the Paddy Dema course is um, is coming big. And when I say Dema, is the D-E-M-R. Uh, so this is the, uh, oh, what was it, Diver Emergency Medic Response. Yeah, Diver something. Emergency Medical Response. That's yeah. it. 
So this is like sort of EFR on steroids. Yes. Um, and but it's more scuba diving focused. Mm -hmm. So in, so EFR for those who don't know, emergency first response is a first aid course, and that'll teach you CPR and AED use and all that kind of stuff. But it doesn't really go into any scuba diving specific ailments. Yeah. And then the rescue diver course it builds on top of it, mm -hmm. but that's more okay, I'm going to get this diver who's having trouble, going to get them out of the water and then get them to professional medical sure. care. Yeah. Whereas where Dima steps in, it's more of a, okay, you can do something really productive in the meantime before you mm. can get those sort of paramedics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, I kind of like it. Yeah, it's quite in depth, isn't it? Because it, it yeah. covers all sorts of things from holes in the hearts to, uh, to pulmonary edema and mm -hmm. all these kind of stuff, uh, oxygen toxicity and barotrauma of the ears and all that kind of stuff. So it's, if you're interested in it, definitely um, sort of look it up. And yeah, um, yeah it's a, it's a smart course to go a 37 on. 37-point course. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, also in the news, the Go Diving Show roster of speakers has been revealed or released. Um, so the Go Diving Show, for those who don't know, is in uh, in Birmingham. It's in the Rico Arena on the 21st, 20, or it's on the 22nd and 23rd. Uh, the 21st is just the, um, uh, the trade um, sort of secret day that we do on Friday um, for sort of trade professionals only. Um, but yeah, they're going to have guest speakers on the Saturday and the Sunday. So we've got Andy Torbert, Monty Halls, Alex Mustard, uh, Miranda Krestinikov, uh, and Sarah Richard from Girls at Scuba. Uh, so they're going to be doing their own sort of. Um, uh, not demonstrations, what's the words? Chat. Um, chat, yeah. <laughs> um, just where they, they talk about something interesting. So, um, yeah, and that's always a nice thing to go do at the show. You can look at all the new sort of gear and mm. stuff, and then you can listen to these uh, these people talk about their amazing dives. Um, and other than that, uh, a new story from the Australian uh, fires at the moment. So a, um, a woman managed to use scuba gear to hide in her swimming pool whilst the uh, sort of fires raged sort of past her um, sort of home or wherever yep. it was. And that's quite, it's it's cool, it's terrifying, but mm. it's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. I think she had to get out maybe once or twice to, uh, to sort of swap tanks or something. Okay. I think I read, um, that might be wrong, but yeah, just kind of wow. sitting on yeah, the bottom of the pool. Pretty hairy. Um, Oh, it's, mm. it's risky. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather leave the area entirely, but um, no, hats off to Scary. her. Yeah. I think she had to look after animals and stuff, so she never, she just didn't, didn't want to leave. Fair enough. Yeah. <sighs> Um, so next on, we're going to talk about our topic for today. Mm. Okay, so today's topic, we're talking about new gear for 2020. Um, so it's usually new stuff is kind of announced at DEMA uh, in October 2019. Mm. Um, so um, so they did release quite a few new interesting things. Um, the, the big one of the show was the Hydroid rebreather helmet, which <laughs> is a, a diving helmet mask that has a built-in rebreather that just terrifies me it's it's clever don't get me wrong mm. but um it is just they they showed a girl diving in it um sort of in the swim pool and whatnot and she was fine no bubbles and all that kind of stuff mm. and you're like okay yeah that is very clever but Would you the kind 40 of meters? The, the instructor in my head just kind of goes what if yeah because yeah, yeah. there's not much volume inside of that and there's no like redundant backup. So it's just like a crash helmet. Yeah, yeah, it's an oversized crash helmet. Um, you've got the visor in front, obviously, so you can see they've got uh, these sort of special canisters. These are like single use disposable canisters, okay. um, which I, I can't remember whether it was scrubber or um, or diluent or, uh, or whatever, but yeah, these like single cans yeah. that you kind of screw into it and, um, and that's it. Granted, yes, you could have a bailout, yeah, yeah. but bailing out of a full face mask is yeah. bad enough, let alone a full helmet that has to have some kind of airtight seal so that it keeps that ambient pressure. Uh. Imagine seeing that on a night dive. <laughs> just imagine, you're not used to it, you're not ready for it, everyone else just wearing their normal gear, jackets and everything, and yeah. all of a sudden Darth Vader comes <laughs> by with nothing else. They're just... Yeah. That, uh, and... There's a few things that I would want to know. The first thing is, is how buoyant is it? Mm. Because it's just a bubble of air <laughs> on your face. <laughs> and surely that just makes your head want to yeah. ascend. Because I've dived um, sort of full face mask before. And even that, 
is quite if if you kind of <laughs> let your neck go loose, yeah, it's it, it kind of it always it? wants yeah. to yeah, go yeah, up. Yeah. So having an entire helmet. Granted, I don't think the whole thing is just empty space, obviously, but... Um, you have a runaway yeah. escape in your head. Oh, oh, um, I just... Yeah, I, I can't see it passing CE because there's no real... I don't think there's a CE test that they can run on it. <laughs> trying, to get a norm, trying to get a traditional rebreather past CE is hard enough, but yeah. let alone a, a brand new concept. So I, I don't know if we'll see this on, on shelves. Still pretty cool. Soon. It's it's cool, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's a engineering feat, it is, uh, it is mm. marvelous, but uh, I don't think we'll see too many in the water in the next five years at least. Brave new world. <sighs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> other than that, Fourth Element are doing a few new things. Um, they've got new um, tech shorts coming out. I think we have a sample of that arriving here tomorrow cool. to uh, to play with. So um, this is basically for people who have uh, their either wetsuit diving or just sort of rash vest and board shorts, but of course they don't have thigh pockets. So this is just neoprene shorts mm. with thigh pockets okay. and. Um, and it's the same pockets from their Argonaut dry suits, um, which I use. Big, big pocket, really nice. And um, yeah, it's just handy to have storage. Yeah. Because as much as pockets on like jacket BCDs, it's just easy to get them there. Yeah, they kind of yeah. sound like a good idea, but trying to get your yeah. arm up to your rib cage and trying to, it's, mm. no. If it's on your thigh, it's it's really easy yeah. to see and, uh, and just to manipulate. Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of extending their range of, um, of luggage. I know it's not that exciting but they brought out the um the expedition range of bags which are like bright orange people love all that kind of mm. stiff, uh, stuff now they've um, brought out like an electric blue version of it okay. um i haven't seen it in the flesh yet but um but yeah that's um, that's quite cool, cool. um i got an email from atomic aquatics this morning and that was about their um their like heating coil so this is basically for cold water diving and it's if you remember back in like um sort of high school do you remember a liebig condenser mm -hmm. so it's basically that but for your regulator so a hose comes out of your regulator it then hits this it goes through a coil mm -hmm. that's exposed to the water and then it comes through to your second stage and because it's got sort of all this sort of surface area it actually warms up the air okay so your second stage is less likely to um oh, to sort of freeze yeah, and, yeah. yeah and free <laughs> pretty, cool. <laughs> pretty cool so um yeah and uh, when i was instructor i always said there there'd be like two great inventions. The first one would be like a mirror on the back of your glove so you could see your students behind you. And the other one would be a, um, a warm air button for your dry suit. Mm. Because when you're uh, just sort of inflating in, uh, in cold water, it, it's just cold air sure. that comes into your suit. Ooh. So it's, it's insulating, but it's not warm. Um, and uh, both of those things have been invented, not by myself, but mm. you're like, Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, lots of um, sort of customization. That seems to be the real theme for 2020. So there's um, there have been a few new bits of um, sort of dive equipment. Nothing too groundbreaking. Mm. But the real big thing is um, yeah, color. You can really sort of customize your stuff. Yes. Uh, you were talking about the uh, the X Deep mm, um, sort mm. of thing where people can literally very customizable, isn't it? Yeah. Build their own. Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I want this color on this panel yeah. and this color on this. Yeah. Make sure it's right when you first get it, though. Oh, good heavens! Yeah. <laughs> um, it's 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 very much a matter of you you create it. It's like those. Um, it reminded me of the build your own car creators. Yeah. You go onto like a car website and you can um, you can build your own and uh, you can have your name stitched and embroidered into it and then at the end you kind of hit save and then it sends you a, a PDF sheet mm -hmm. um, and kind of that's it if you have any doubts or want to change your mind do it there just yeah just <laughs> do it all over again yeah. don't um, yeah because once they, it's done they're gonna make it from scratch mm -hmm. they're gonna make it to whatever's on that PDF yeah yeah and um, if it's not on there it's not gonna happen oh centimeters <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, but no, they they're X Deep. They're definitely smashing it mm. when it comes to uh, to new things. Yeah, they're um, they're definitely one of the, um, the sort of up and coming brands. Definitely. Um, I don't know how much they are sort of around the world, but definitely in the UK, they're um, they're definitely mm. becoming a, a big and exciting brand. Yeah. 
Um, okay, and then we're going to, um, we've got an ad read, so we're gonna go through that, uh, but then we're gonna talk about your comments and uh, sort of answer some of your questions. Okay, so before we get to your comments, here is a word from today's sponsor. Are you looking for the best scuba diving the world has to offer? Well, liverboard.com is the right place for you. Liverboard offers unique diving experiences around the world, including destinations such as the Maldives, Ariatol, Thailand, the Similan Islands, and of course, the Red Sea. They feature 470 liverboards in 38 countries with more than 28,000 plus trips. 24 seven multi-language reservation teams ready to help you find the perfect diving holiday. To find out more about liverboard.com, click on the link pinned in the comments below or visit our website and search for liverboards. Explore the oceans of the world in style and comfort with liverboard.com. I love liverboards. That was really well read. I've, I've it was like Stephen Fry. I've said that before, to, <laughs> to be honest. <coughs> and, and yeah, this this is what I do professionally. Yeah, but yeah liverboards <coughs> and liverboard.com is uh, is quite good. I've, mm. I've had a quick sort of um, sort of route around their website, and um, yeah, you just it goes from the sort of sublime to the extreme. Yeah. You can just yeah, yeah, yeah. you can go anywhere. You can explore the boats, which is nice because you can uh, sort of see where's where's best to get a cabin and uh, sort of where they uh, where they visit. It and yeah, yeah, yeah. liverboards. Some of them are just incredible. Oh, living there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go go visit um, journey. Go. <laughs> um, look down below on our uh, sort of YouTube page uh, or this uh, sort of YouTube video and click on the link pinned in the comments below. Okay, so now we're going to go on to your comments and questions. Uh, the first one is from Johnny Batiste uh, on episode one of Deco Stop. So, advice on fins. There are so many to choose from. Yeah, there are. Uh, and where do you start? What fins do you use and why? Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, let's talk about sort of where do you start? with fins we probably start with the fins that are given to you when you start your open water course there's that yeah, yeah. You, you do start with that yeah. but um so there's okay so there's two different types of fins you've got full foot fins which are more for snorkeling and really chilled out scuba diving mm -hmm. and then you have open heel fins that require um Booty. boots yeah and uh, and a strap so if you're doing more scuba diving then i'd definitely go for open heel if you're just doing sort of snorkeling then full foot because uh, they're a lot lighter but um, but then when you get to sort of open heel fins yeah there's a whole mm. range of different massive um, I mean what fins do you use? I so when I was in Thailand obviously um, Gulf of Thailand um, no no current no weather just perfect all the time uh, it's um, rough isn't it yeah it was so <laughs> I had a pair of open hill volos Mara's volos yep. um, really flexible yep. used to get loads of use out of them they were great yep. um after that, I've got some jet fins. Yes. Really like them. Yes. They're a lot heavier. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> but I've kind of got a little bit positively buoyant feet. So yep. the, the heaviness of that kind of makes it neutral. Um, I yep. really like them. I really like the bungee strap. The bungee strap is amazing. Yes. I I can't go back to doing all this clipping oh. stuff on a boat that's moving around. <laughs> it just doesn't seem right anymore. The bungee strap's so easy and I just like them. Yeah. Those jet fins haven't changed since the 50s, really. Oh no, they're, they're, they haven't needed to. No, no, they no, work. they're they still the action man fins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I myself, I use Apex RK3 fins, nice ones. Um, both at home and abroad, because they're not they're not ridiculously heavy, mm. um, but they're like the uh, the jet fins. They're nice and short. Yeah, they have the power. They're made out of a single piece of uh, or sort of rubber material, so they're bulletproof yeah. and they just do the job. That's it. They've yeah. got spring heel straps, so yeah, one hand gets them on and off. Um, there's no um, no screwing around. Yeah. But when you're looking for fins. It's um, there's there are so many that kind of the more you spend on a fin, the kind of the cleverer the technology mm, is. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of hinged fins nowadays, like um, sort of Sea Wing Nova from Scuba Pro, mm. uh, the Mara's Extreme, where they've got a hinge kind of halfway down, and they feel really floppy in the water. Yeah, I've not tried them so. But you shift. Mm, yeah, and yeah. they're very very clever. Um, but um, but yeah, personally, I like a, a sort of a jet fin style, mm. uh, just because yeah, they're, they're nice and compact. So if you're in and out of wrecks, you're not smacking into things. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're they're kind of bulletproof. They're just solid, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, you can't go too far wrong with a pair of fins. Yeah. Well, um, they they all kind of do the, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so this next one is from Doffercopter. 
Um, so, what are the best methods to improve air consumption? And I'd like to know more and recognize N2 narcosis in the water, like signs. Uh, so improving air consumption, I always used to teach students to uh, to hum, mm. okay. because a um, if you're trying if you just exhale, it's about that long. But if you hum a song, sorry for getting it must be so much fun on the dark side. It takes a lot longer. Yeah. Um, when I was doing my instructor course, they told me to breathe in for three seconds and breathe out for three seconds. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just kind of relaxing. Yeah, I suppose as, as time goes on, you just gen, you naturally get better with air consumption anyway. Yeah. Um, it's, it's quite unfair and no one ever mentions this because scuba diving is mainly a blokey thing, but girls are so much better on yeah. air consumption than guys to start with. Yeah. So as they get better, they, they are just so much better on air. Yeah. I mean, they, you, you'll have a girl doing, I've had, I've had people doing the, the third or fourth dive and they're on the same air consumption as me. And you're yeah. like, what? Huh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even but, on a tri dive, yeah. it's, it's yeah, some yeah. innate <clears throat> thing where they just don't seem to breathe as much as yeah. us. I, yeah. yeah, no, I picked up on that yeah. as well. You're not equal to us. You're so much better <laughs> and you're so much more efficient, but no one wants to say anything. <laughs> Uh, another thing is sort out your weighting mm. um, because too many people wear too much lead so then they have to add too much air to their BCD and they keep adjusting that so they dump gas and then they put a little gas into their BCD and then they get rid of it. Mm. So you're just wasting that gas. If you have correct weighting, you only have to add just a tiny smidge of air every now and then and that's kind of it mm. and as you change your uh, sort of profile where you are in the water you don't have to keep dumping this valuable yeah. resource so um so yeah that and uh, just kind of relax just visualize the dive beforehand yeah. um yeah uh, and then nitrogen narcosis uh there's so many different signs and symptoms and it's different for everybody um, it used to be, they say, right, 18 meters, that's kind of where narcosis can start mm -hmm. to set in. But some people get it at 12, some people don't get it until like the 20s and 30s. Mm. But um, it's just, as narcosis is, it's, you kind of, I don't know, you either do silly things yeah. or you just, you kind of ask them a question and they, they kind of gaze at you. Or they're sitting there looking at their fingers. Yeah, or it's... Um, yeah, so many different sort of signs and symptoms, mm. but it's basically someone who's not really switched on. Yeah, it's someone that's acting different all of a sudden, isn't it? And um, yeah. yeah, normally you can get them and lift them up. And yeah. lift, get them two yeah. metres up go. and they're fine. They're like, what happened there? That's it. It, it kind of it dissipates. Yeah. But um, a good way to, um, uh, to kind of test it, I learned, was to give the OK symbol and then a number and then you obviously arranged this beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They then um, sort of give the OK symbol back and then sort of plus one. Yeah. So then there's that sort of very remedial math, but it's still something for your brain to do. So if someone's sort of switched on, whereas you, a lot of people, you look at them, you give them the OK sign and they just reflex, yeah. give it back. But if they have to do a small calculation first, then you can kind of assess, oh, OK, it took them a little while to figure that one out. Yeah. They might be not. Couldn't do that in the same um, No. <laughs> What's three plus one? Yeah. Uh, hang on, let me get my slate. Uh, <laughs> uh, black Crackling. poor uh, <clears throat> on the first episode of Deco Stop. Uh, best value uh, for money travel BCD. Mm. Um, I mean, I like the uh, the Scuba Pro Light Hawk. Um, that's a smart, very lightweight BCD. Um, it's basically a wing and a flexible harness. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly lightweight, it's not ridiculously expensive, and it kind of has everything that you need. Because personally, I don't, I don't have too many pockets as such. Yeah. When I'm sort of traveling, if I'm sort of somewhere nice and, uh, and sunny, if you've got a torch, it means that it's probably gonna be in your hand, it's not gonna be in my pocket. Yeah. Um, you've got D-rings to clip DSMBs off onto. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, um, obviously, we, we're the, the best value one that we're doing here at the moment is the Mares Pure SLS. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's at £227. Pounds. Lovely. Um, yeah, and that weighs in at 3.6 kilos. Yep. Uh, our best seller on the travel package yep. is the Scuba Pro Hydros. Um, that seems to be the, a very, very popular that's one. very popular. Very popular. It's a very different style BCD. Yeah, more expensive. More um, expensive. Over 500. Um, but that, again, is 3.7 kilos. Yeah. Um, but a nice, very nice jacket style BCD. Yes, yes. And, uh, and yeah, but it's, it's quite handy for travel as well because normally at the end of the trip, you kind of have to dry your kit mm. as quickly and, and uh, effectively as possible because then you're traveling home relatively um, sort of soon. And if you've got sort of wet stuff in your bag, yeah. then it's just, just going to go horrible and yeah. heavy and musty. Um, but this uh, is made out of monoprene, which is the same material as their fins. So it dries as soon as you get out of the yeah. water. Like, Haha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else have we got? Danny Harland uh, on episode one of Deco Stop asks, how many hours would you practice dives recommend before you do an open water course? Uh, most people tend to do like one try dive yeah like a dsd or something yeah discover scuba and then if you enjoy it then sign up for a course yeah you go straight on your course um, and then, um... I, I wouldn't do too many because you're you're gonna get that experience on yeah. the actual course yeah le learn um, it on the course and then do fun dives yeah. uh, start, if you're at a resort or wherever you're at or if you're with a um uh, with, with a um then you can they can get it from there yeah yeah, yeah. so um one <laughs> uh, I would recommend, yeah, just do just do a try dive. Just make sure that you get on with it. Yeah, um, make sure it's for you first. Yes, and uh, and yeah, then sign up for a course. Mm. Right. So Tim Barnett on episode one of Deco Stop. Do you think sharks, etc., are less aggressive nowadays than in the past? I don't know if they ever were aggressive. I don't think they are. I think it's, I think it's more the kind of the cinema and the TV of the age. Do you mean the film Jaws? Yeah, Jaws, you've got Sea Hunt um, and uh, and all those kind of underwater like TV shows where the protagonist is kind of pounced upon by this shark mm. because he's in its territory yeah. and it's a stock footage of a shark just kind of swimming past yeah. and it's kind of, I don't know if they actually were ever that aggressive, um, I mean they don't like scuba divers. No. If anyone ever asks me sort of on the street about sort of scuba diving or whatever, and they say, oh, but what about sharks? It's like, well, sharks don't like us because yeah, we're noisy. <laughs> we make bubbles, yeah. which they hate. Mm. They have no idea what we are. So we could be dangerous to them mm. for all they know. Yeah. So scuba divers tend to swim towards sharks because yeah. they swim away from us yeah, that's and it. we want to see them. Mm. Um, They're more interested in like, um, uh, uh, um, surfers and, and people like that, people yes. swimming on the surface, aren't yeah. they? And it's normally first thing in the morning or sort of just before the sun goes Yeah, out. that kind of yeah. diurnal, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. dusk <clears throat> type time. But yeah, um, yeah as, uh, as scuba divers, no, they, they don't tend to no. be a threat to us. Humans, on the other hand, are a massive threat to sharks. We Very kill true. 100 million every oh, year. It's terrible. But, yeah. Yes. We'll Maybe. worry too much about the sharks. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, um, Gino, uh, this actually came through to our um, customer services team this week, um, and he wants to know uh, why are prices not the same all over the world? Right. Mm. <laughs> okay, so suppliers set the prices. Um, they have regional worldwide sales. They will have Europe, Asia, America, and so on. Um, they will set the prices for those regions. As retail sellers, we are not allowed to sell outside of the European Union, for example, as we're in the UK. Yeah. Um, they're very, very strict on this, and there isn't a lot you can do about it. It's basically because, so if you take a brand like Mares, say, mm. so they have some of their equipment is made in Italy, where they're based, and then they have some things that are made in, say, Indonesia, um, or probably a better example is like an American company. So they make something in America, but then they have something made somewhere elsewhere. So the stuff that's made in America is quite cheap to sell in America because mm. it doesn't have all the import costs of um, sort of freight and then import tax and all that kind of stuff. So some things 
that are made in America, they're going to be cheap in America, but then they're going to be expensive elsewhere. Yeah. Because then we have to incur that sort of transport costs. But then the flip side of it, the stuff that they make elsewhere is expensive in America, but it's relatively mm. cheap here because it's made here. So it's, yeah, it's... Swings and roundabouts. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's the world economy as mm. such. And because not everything is made in one factory in wherever... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's made all over the world and yeah, you've got yeah, all those yeah. different costs. Uh, but yeah, we do have economic zones because of this so that we don't tread on each other's feet because where it would be cheaper to buy from another country when you could just support your local dive centre. Mm. Um, yeah, so we, we have these quite strict boundaries of where we're allowed to sell yeah. and, uh, and such. But, um, but yeah, a, a quick quick um, lesson on uh, economics. <laughs> uh, wasn't expecting to do that this morning. Um, Matthew Halton, uh, again on the first episode of Deco Stop, could you do a video around the perfect regulator setup? Uh, also, as a current DMT, Dive Master Trainee, um, I have my uh, I have all of my own gear uh, used since open water in 2009. Would you guys advise me to go out and buy a whole new set of gear for travel work as a DM abroad or use the kit I have as I'm familiar with it? Okay, so question one, can you do a video around the perfect regulator setup? Uh, yeah, the problem is, is that there's so many for, oh, I can yeah, do one thing. Perfect for you, might not be perfect for me. It's... Yeah. And also diving on singles, <coughs> twins, side mount, station, there's jackets, wings. Yeah, and it depends on your training agency. Um, so they're all going to do it slightly differently. I mean, I myself, I prefer a, a long hose primary donate, um, but someone else will use a long hose opto donate, mm -hmm. and it's it's all great. So yeah. we can do, but um, it's it's hard to say this is the best. Uh, I myself personally, I'd recommend DIR setups, that kind of long hose primary, but it, it, it depends on what you're teaching and, uh, and what you're diving on. Uh, yeah, also as a uh, dive master trainee, he's got all of his own gear. It's, it's about 10 years old. Would you advise to go out and buy a whole new set of gear? Not mm. really. It's it's kind of- if As long as it works, as long as it's yeah. been serviced. If it's falling apart, <clears throat> yes. yes. Um, it's it's almost worrying as like an instructor and you see a dive master turn up and all of their gear is like fresh out of the box <laughs> yeah. because you know it's not been tested mm. something could go wrong you're yeah. not kind of familiar with the equipment so yeah your own familiar equipment is definitely going to be the best yeah. uh, it is good to keep on top of like new trends because you are an ambassador for the next generation of divers so if they see you wearing tatty old gear then they're going to be like oh okay well why am i going to buy all this fancy yeah. stuff i'll just get second hand off ebay um so it's a matter of just kind of assess it yourself yeah. as something starts to wear out, then yeah, replace it. Mm. Um, wetsuits, prime example. If you've got a 10 year old wetsuit, chances are it was five mil when you bought it, but now it's like three mil yeah. because it's been compressed over years and years of diving. Um, so, I should get big, big, bigger over 10 years. Yeah, yeah after, especially in the Christmas period, I find uh, my <laughs> wetsuit shrinks. Um, so um, so it's, kind of, it's a yes and no. Yeah. Um, replace what needs to get replaced, but don't do everything. Um, Not too shiny. Yeah, yeah, don't um, don't stand out too much <laughs> on the dive site. <laughs> right, so from uh, MDO video, um, this is about the Scuba Pro M25, MK25 and the D420 review. Mm -hmm. What happened to the old D400? They stopped making it. They stopped making it a while ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's really about it. What happened to the old D400s? Yeah, they, they stopped making it. Yeah. They, You've got the D420 now. The D420 is the new version. Um, nice. So they've kind of tweaked it and they've um, sort of modernized it a little bit. I watched your review last night. It's really good. Yes. Well, yeah. thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's one of those regulators that kind of grows on you. Mm. When you first look at it, you go, oh, that looks it's very, very odd. Small, very, yeah, 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 yeah. But because the diaphragm is lowered down, it's got that ever so slight pressure difference. It makes sense why they've done it, yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, they, they just upgrade their stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the R195 comes from the R190. Um, yeah, they, they just, mm. it's the previous generation, and then they just make a new one. Um, 
yeah, that's, that's how the scuba diving industry works. <clears throat> Right, so on to the outro. So thanks to theliverboard.com for sponsoring today's episode. Uh, follow our podcast on Spotify. Rate us on iTunes if you can. It really helps with our podcast. Um, pop your questions in the comments below uh, in YouTube and share the podcast with all your diving friends and help spread the word. Thank you very much for watching. Hi guys, welcome to Deco Stop. So Deco Stop is a brand new podcast that we ourselves here at Simply Scuba uh, are going to be releasing. This is going to be a weekly podcast where we talk about sort of all of the interesting things um, that is going to interest uh, sort of scuba divers, really. Hmm. Um, so I am Mark, and I'm joined here with Greg. Uh, we are both sort of uh, 